Do you have an aquarium, but you're leaving home for a vacation or a short trip, and you're not sure what to do with your fish tank? Well, rest assured, everything will be fine. Today, I'm gonna to tell you all that you need to know on how to leave your aquarium home alone. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now, I'm actually going through this right now with myself. I obviously have a lot of aquariums, and we're leaving home for a few days, going to Hawaii to visit a family, and all of these tanks will not have me here to take care of them. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of help you understand all the things that you need to think about and do before you leave. And it's really easy when it comes to going on a trip. Now, the first thing you wanna figure out is how long are you gonna be gone? If you're gonna be gone three, four, five days, whatever, you don't really need to do anything. Your fish will be fine. If your fish aren't gonna starve, you know, nothing's gonna catastrophically change in your aquarium as, as, as long as everything stays the same. So I would really probably not do anything. Um, unless you're breeding fish, you have some some fry that you know, you know, need to get food or some situation like that. If you're just a regular average person keeping an aquarium or a few aquariums at home and you have to leave for a few days, just don't do anything. Just leave them alone. That would be what I would do. I've done it hundreds of times in my old job before uh, my, in my past career. I was traveling all the time for work and my tanks were fine. You guys watched, you know, years of videos on YouTube and, you know, my tanks were left alone for several days at a time all throughout that period. So for a few days, do nothing. Now, maybe you're going to be gone a little bit longer. And if that's the case, then you might need to do a couple of things. Now, again, if you're going to be gone for a week, seven, eight days or so, you're probably still fine doing next to nothing. Now, what I do before I go, if I know I'm going to be gone for about a week is Prior to me leaving for about a week or so, I'll start to feed a little bit heavier, meaning that instead of giving one scoop of pellets, I might give a scoop and a quarter and just a little bit more every day just to like get them a little fatter, beefier, just a little bit extra on their body. That way I don't have to worry about anyone getting really skinny while I'm gone. Now, the other thing that I do is I just make sure that all the water parameters are where they need to be. So if I'm gone for a week, I don't want to leave with a tank that's, you know, has elevated nitrate levels or something like that. So I'll test my aquariums before I go, a few days before I go. And usually about two to three days before I depart, I'll do the water changes necessary on any of the tanks where I'm getting the readings that it needs to be done. So um, I don't like to do this the day before I leave. And the reason why I always tell people to do it two or three days in advance is that way, you have that day, the next day, even the day after to just double check your aquarium and make sure that everything's fine. You don't want to do a big 75 gallon, you know, water change on your 125 and, you know, not really pay attention. And then you're gone the next day, not knowing like, oh, something was a little bit off with the water. I should have put a little bit more of this additive or did something different. So um, just do it a couple of days in advance. That's what I do just to make sure that everything's stable before I go. Okay, so everybody is probably worried about feeding your fish. And as I shared, your fish are fine for a few days, just doing nothing. Now, your fish are in controlled boxes. They're in these little controlled environments in your home. Them going a few days without eating is perfectly fine. Now, I did mention fry. So if you do have newly hatched baby fish, or if you're breeding and raising fish, and you will have to accommodate for some of those fish. And uh, that can easily be done with what we call an auto feeder. You can set up an auto feeder if you do have fry, or if you are gonna be gone for a little bit longer or if you just want to make sure that your fish are fed while you're gone do this in advance don't set your auto feeder up the day before you go set it up like a week or two before you go at a minimum and just make sure that it's perfect that you can dial it in to get the right amount and if you are going to be using an auto feeder air on the side of less food than you normally feed because you're just basically giving your fish a little bit of a snack keep them occupied you know, keep some of the aggression down without just giving that same amount of food all the time because you don't want something to happen to where there's like an elevated, you know, ammonia or nitrate or something happening in your tank because you're dumping too much food in there that was uh, not intended. Now, let's say that you are going to be gone for a lengthy period of time, you know, a week or two or whatever, and you do need to, you know, besides having an auto feeder, maybe you want to have someone that's house sitting or checking on your house to check on your aquariums as well. So you want to be very detailed in their instructions um, or very simple, oversimplified. So if you do have some complex system where they have to go into the refrigerator and take the zucchini and put that in the tank for the plucko or, you know, or, you know, throw in the rapashi gel food that you have in the fridge and make sure that all your baby plecos get that or something then, you know, print out something, 
tape it to the aquarium, um, get like a wet erase marker that I like to write on tanks with because they don't wipe off with dry. Like if you brush up against it, it doesn't come off. You need like a wet cloth to take it off. And then you could just write down on the tank, you know, feed this aquarium the gel squares in the fridge or put a slice of zucchini in this aquarium. You could write that down. Now something else that I like to do, and I've done this before, is to put food in plastic bags, measure it out exactly. It's a lot easier just to say, hey, go down to the fish room, take that Ziploc bag, dump it in there, and they're done. If I want to, I can write the date on there and say, you know, I don't know, June 1st or something like that. And then they'll just know, oh, on June 1st, I dumped that in there. And that's all they need to know. It makes it very simple. Now, what about water changes? What if you're gonna be gone for a week? You don't need to worry about it. What if you're gonna be gone for two weeks? Still don't need to worry about water changes unless you have, again, some very unique situation where you know the fish in that aquarium have a super high bio load and they need to have a water change every few days or whatever you're gonna be fine. So a couple of reasons why. One, you're feeding less, right? So if you're feeding less or hopefully you're feeding less, then that's a lesser of a bio load. So you're not going to have to worry about uh, excess waste. So um, they will be fine without that water change. Here are a few tips that I also like to give people when it comes to leaving their crams and, and uh, or you know for whatever reason you're leaving your home, um, doing these tips helps. And the one thing that I would recommend is to automate, but automate simple things like the lights. If you do have live aquarium plants, then you obviously need the lights on in the aquarium to allow the plants to photosynthesize. So instead of having to worry about someone coming and turning on the lights and turning off the lights, just set them on a timer. You can do like inexpensive dial timers, or you can do a lot of the uh, Wi-Fi timers that are out there. I happen to power this entire room, as far as the lights are concerned, with uh, Casa Wi-Fi timers. And it makes it very easy because I can set it up on a schedule. And also because it's, you know, um, modern technology, you can control it from your phone. So I could be in Hawaii, and turn off the lights in my fish room if I wanted to, or turn something on, or the lights in the living room and the aquariums. And then I also have a camera. So I have a camera in here that's very inexpensive. It's connected to that same system, it's the same company. They're like 30 bucks or something like that. And uh, while I'm looking at the light schedule, I can also just click on the photo of the fish room and, or the video I should say, and then I could like see what's going on, you know, real time. And if like something catastrophic happened and I happen to see like water coming out of a tank or something all wonky, then I could just say, hey, house sitter, whoever's home, um, go down there and do this to the fish tanks. Now, speaking of light, if you don't have live plants, then the really, the only reason that you have lights on in your aquarium is for you to view and enjoy the fish. You don't really need lights in the aquarium. The fish are fine with ambient light. So if you do have an aquarium without, without uh, live plants, then I would just turn off the lights. Um, one, it's gonna reduce the amount of algae, so it's one less thing to worry about when you come back home. Two, it also kind of helps to keep things calm. So when you have less light on the aquarium, there's less uh, coloration within the fish, so they don't see like, you know, behind me again, you've got, you know, the bright yellows and the oranges and the blues. And if it's darker in there and everything's kind of gray looking, they're not flashing and chasing each other around as much. So it does kind of help calm things down. And then the other thing on that point is temperature. But if you lower the temperature of the aquarium by just a few degrees, so maybe you go from like 78 to 74, a couple things are going to happen. One, you're going to have less activity because they're not going to be as active, right? So they're not going to have as much chasing around and all that kind of stuff. You're gonna have a lesser bio load because they're eating less because they're not metabolizing as much. Um, you're obviously saving energy. Um, so these are things that you could do. Now, again, like the other things that I shared earlier, don't do it on the day that you're leaving because the temperature in the tank doesn't fluctuate that quickly. This is something that you probably wanna test like a week or two in advance. Lower the temperature, set it to like 74, then go back a day or two later and make sure that's where it is and just keep checking it until it's at that range and then just leave it. And that way, you know, it's lesser, you know, lesser temperature by a few degrees, turn off the lights, everyone's fine at 74 degrees, they're not as hungry, they're not as feisty, and it's again, one less thing for you to worry about. Basically, the long story, 
made short is don't worry, have fun, enjoy your time away. Your fish tank should be fine if you properly make uh, you know arrangements beforehand. Now one thing that I do wanna add and something that I do is I leave instructions on the outside of my fish room in case of emergency. It's kinda like break this glass in case of an emergency. It's basically open up this envelope in the event of an emergency. That means like I'm stuck somewhere and I can't get home or something happened and I got hurt and I'm in the hospital and I won't be home for two weeks or something worse. That way the people that I know, the people that I care about that are here can open up that envelope and say, okay, this is what I do because Zenzo's not around to take care of the fish. I'll call this person, I'll email this person, they'll help me, they'll take care of it, or I don't need to worry about it for X amount of days. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I know it was quite long. If you wanna learn more about the subject, then watch this video right here.